And we did certainly send Musa with our signs and a clear authority, nation after nation. Now the people of Musa, إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِ We sent him to Fir'aun and his establishment. But they followed the command of Fir'aun. And the command of Fir'aun was not at all discerning. He will precede his people on the day of resurrection and lead them into the fire. And wretched is a place to which they are led. So we have to see who do we follow today. Because whoever we follow today, that is the one whom we will be with in the hereafter. Those who followed Fir'aun did not follow Musa alayhi salam. What will happen? They will be led by Fir'aun into the fire. And they were followed in this world with a curse and on the day of resurrection. And wretched is the gift which is given. This is a gift, the outcome. How sad, how wretched that they are given la'na in this world and on the day of judgment. Because you see, whenever a person is following somebody, he's expecting some benefit in return. So here we see that the people followed Fir'aun. They chose Fir'aun. Why? Because they expected him to give them something. What does Allah say? What do they get? La'na in this world and the hereafter. ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْقُرَانَ قُصُّهُ عَلَيْكَ That is from the news of the cities which we relate to you. Of them, some are still standing and some are as a harvest mowed down. Meaning some of these people of the past, you see their homes standing today. You see the pyramids. And there are some other nations, you don't see their traces anymore. You don't even know where they lived. And we did not wrong them, but they wronged themselves. And they were not availed at all by their gods, which they invoked other than Allah, when there came the command of your Lord. And they did not increase them in other than ruin. And thus is the seizure of your Lord. When He seizes the cities, when Allah seizes people, when He holds them responsible, when He punishes them, while they are committing wrong, this is how it is. How is it? That then there is no escape for them. Then there is no more chances. Indeed, his akhv, meaning when he seizes people, that is painful and severe. His punishment is severe. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah gives respite to the oppressor. Meaning the one who is doing wrong, Allah gives him respite. He gives him time. He gives him chances. One nation was given 950 years. But then eventually what happens? When he takes him, when he seizes him, then he never releases him. Then there's no more chances. Then that is the end. That is the end. And here we need to reflect on ourselves. How many chances our Lord Azza wa Jal has given us? Alhamdulillah, He's given us another Ramadan. Another Ramadan. Another opportunity to fast. So many people, they fasted last year, they're not fasting this year. Either because they're not alive or because their health condition does not permit them. Their situation does not permit them. They're not able to fast. Allah gives us chance after chance. What do we need to do? Avail those chances. And not get deceived by this world. Because if we do, then we only ruin ourselves. Inna fi dhalika la ayah. Indeed, in that is a sign for those who fear the punishment of the hereafter. Dhalika yawm majmu'u lahun nas. That is a day for which the people will be collected, and that is a day which will be witnessed. Witnessed by who? By who? All people and us. ذَلِكَ يَوْمٌ مَشْهُودٌ وَمَا نُؤَخِّرُهُ إِلَّا لِأَجَلٍ مَعْدُودٌ And we do not delay it except for a limited term. It's not far. The day it comes, no soul will speak except by his permission. And among them will be the wretched and the prosperous. As for those who are destined to be wretched, they will be in the fire. For them therein is violent exhaling and inhaling. They will be abiding therein as long as the heavens and the earth endure. Except what your Lord should will. Meaning if He wants, He can take some out of the hellfire. And He will eventually take some people out of the hellfire. Not all. Indeed your Lord is an effector of what He intends. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ فَعَالٌ لِمَا and as for those who were destined to be prosperous, they will be in paradise, abiding therein as long as the heavens and the earth endure. Accept what your Lord should will, a bestowal that is uninterrupted. What do we see here? خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكَ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكَ What does it mean? That ultimately, He is the Lord. 
even when they eternally live in Jannah, He is still their Lord. He is still their Lord. Nothing will happen except with His will. فَلَا تَكُ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِمَّا يَعْبُدُ هَا So do not be in doubt, O Prophet, as to what these polytheists are worshipping. They worship not except as their forefathers worshipped before. Meaning they're only blindly following. And indeed we will give them their share, undiminished. And we had certainly given Musa the scripture, but it came under disagreement. And if not for a word that proceeded from your Lord, it would have been judged between them. And indeed they are concerning the Qur'an in disquieting doubt. And in Indeed, وَإِنَّ كُلَّ لَمَّا لَيُوَفِّيَنَّهُمْ رَبُّكَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And indeed, each and every person, your Lord will fully compensate them for their deeds, including you and I. Indeed, He is the acquainted with what they do. Nothing is hidden of our actions. فَاسْتَقِمْ So remain firm. كَمَا أُمِرْتَ On a right course, as you have been commanded. فَاسْتَقِمْ now become firm as Allah has ordered you. Meaning whatever Allah has ordered you, now do it. And do it properly. And do not stop. وَمَن تَابَ مَعَكَ And those who have turned back with you to Allah. وَلَا تَطْغَوْهُ And do not transgress. إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Indeed, he is seeing of what you do. And do not incline toward those who do wrong, lest you be touched by the fire. And you would not have other than Allah any protectors, then you would not be helped. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَيِ النَّهَارِ وَزُلُفًا مِنَ اللَّهِ and establish prayer at the two ends of the day. Two ends of the day, Fajr and Maghrib. And at the approach of the night, Isha. Inna al-hasanat yudhibna sayyiat. Indeed, good deeds do away with misdeeds. Thalika dhikra lidhakirin. That is a reminder for those who remember. In Surah Tawbah, we learned that when a person has made a mistake, what does he need to do? He needs to give sadaqah. Sadaqah is something that erases our sins. And also we learn here, Salah is mentioned. إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ And not just Sadaqah and Salah. All good deeds, they are charity. And what do they do? They erase the sins that a person has committed. But this is a reminder for who? For those who remember. Those who remember when they have made a mistake, that now they need to do something good in order to erase it. The Prophet ﷺ said, the example of the person who commits sins, and then he starts performing good deeds, is like that of a man on whom is a tight ditter. Ditter is like a armor. Okay, So just imagine something that is very tight, you know, like a life jacket almost, right? that you can't move about. It fixes your neck in place. You can't even move your neck easily. right? So, Or like a neck brace. But it's not just around the neck, it's all over the body. And this armor, how is it? It has links in it, right? So the Prophet ﷺ said, the example of the person who commits sins and then he performs good deeds is like that of a man on whom is a tight ditter, which is reaching up to his throat. It's like he's being suffocated by his sins. When he performs a good deed, one link breaks and it falls. And then when he performs another good deed, another link breaks and it falls. Until he keeps performing good deeds, and that entire, there, it has fallen to the ground, broken, fallen to the ground. This is the example of the one who does good deeds. That how he becomes free, because our sins, what do they do? They trap us, isn't it? They suffocate us, they torture us, they create difficulties for us. So when a person performs good deeds, he repents, then what happens? One link after the other is broken off. It is thrown down and a person comes out all free. But this is only possible when he does good deeds. In another hadith we learn, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, advise me. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you do a bad deed, then follow it with a good deed. That good deed will erase that bad deed. So Abu Dhar, he said, O Messenger of Allah, is saying, La ilaha illallah from good deeds also? He said, it is the best of good deeds. He afdalul hasanat. So anytime you feel like something wrong has been done, something wrong has been said, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And earlier we learned that La ilaha illallah is the best dhikr also. 
It's the most superior form of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَاصْبِرْ And be patient. Yes, life is difficult, but be patient. For indeed, Allah does not allow to be lost the reward of those who do good. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Because in order to do good, you have to have a lot of patience. You have to first control yourself and then you have to fight the environment that is around you. You have to struggle a lot and that struggle is patience. And then when you start doing something good, it's very easy to stop. When you keep doing it, that is patience. And remember that those who are patient, those who do good, Allah does not waste their reward. So why were there not among the generations before you, those of enduring discrimination, forbidding corruption on earth, except a few of those we saved from among them, but those who wronged, pursued what luxury they were given therein, and they were criminals. Allah is demanding that there must be some people who would forbid corruption in the land. Where are those people? Who is going to stop evil from spreading? You know, just like in a community, you need security personnel. You need police officers. You need firefighters. Why? Because there will certainly be fires. There will certainly be problems. There will certainly be crimes. So you need these people as community helpers. Allah says, where are those community helpers who will stop people from corruption? Who will stop people from shirk? Who will stop people from disobeying Allah? Where are they? Where are they in this world? Why is it that we keep throwing this responsibility on the shoulders of other people? Somebody else will do it. Somebody else will do it. No, why not me? There must be somebody who has to do this. But what is it that prevents us from going forth in Allah's way? It's our dunya. It's our houses. But those who wronged pursued the luxury they were given in this world. And they were criminals. And your Lord would not have destroyed the cities unjustly while their people were reformers. And if your Lord had willed, He could have made mankind one community. But they will not cease to differ, except whom your Lord has given mercy. And for that He created them. But the word of your Lord is to be fulfilled, that I will surely fill hell with jinn and men altogether. And each story we relate to you from the news of the messengers is that by which we make firm your heart. Because when you see the struggles of the prophets, it strengthens your heart. It gives you stability and firmness. And there has come to you in this the truth and an instruction and a reminder for the believers. And say to those who do not believe, work according to your position. Indeed, we are working. Are we working? Are we working? Or are we just sitting? Right now we're sitting, but in our lives, what are we doing? Think. Think. There are so many people who are working constantly to stop people from the way of Allah. Are we working to call people to the way of Allah? وَقُلْ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ اِعْمَلُوا عَلَى مَكَانَتِكُمْ إِنَّا عَامِلُونَ وَانْتَظِرُوا إِنَّا مُنْتَظِرُونَ And wait, indeed we are waiting. And to Allah belongs the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth. And to Him will be returned the matter, all of it. So worship Him. فَعْبُدْهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ And rely upon Him. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And your Lord is not unaware of that which you do. Okay, let's listen to Surah Yusuf. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إن رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا 
In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Alif, Lam, Ra. These are the verses of the clear book. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Qur'an that you might understand. We relate to you, O Prophet, the best of stories in what we have revealed to you of this Qur'an, although you were before it among the unaware. So over here, the best story is going to be mentioned. And that is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And Allah says, you were unaware of it before. Because we learned that on the suggestion of the Jews, the mushrikeen of Makkah, they asked the Prophet ﷺ about Yusuf ﷺ. Because the Arabs did not know about Yusuf ﷺ at all. They didn't know about Yusuf ﷺ. There was no mention of Yusuf in their stories, in their tradition, in their culture. There was no mention at all. So the Jews said that if he tells you about Yusuf, then we'll see what he says. And if what he says conforms to what we believe about Yusuf, then he must be a true prophet. And if he doesn't, then his lie will be exposed. So what happened? They asked about Yusuf a.s. and Allah revealed the entire story of Yusuf a.s. in great detail. And through the story, he taught indirectly that what are you doing to your brother Muhammad wasallam? Look at what the brothers of Yusuf did to him. Aren't you doing something similar? Yusuf alayhi salam's brothers, they were jealous of him basically. And this is why they hurt him. They harmed him. They tried to harm him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about good from that very thing through which they wanted to harm Yusuf alayhi salam. So the mushrikeen are being told that, look, you are also just envious of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam because you know, you know he's a prophet. You recognize him to be a prophet. What are you going to do? Are you going to harm him? Well, if you do, you cannot harm Allah's plan. Just as the brothers of Yusuf they couldn't ultimately 
destroy him. Why? Because Allah protected him. So what is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam? إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِي When Yusuf said to his father, O oh my father, indeed I have seen in a dream eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating to me. He said, O oh my son, do not relate your vision, your dream to your brothers. Or they will contrive against you a plan. Indeed, shaitan to man is a manifest enemy. He's saying, your brothers, they have a problem with you and it's clear. So you don't need to tell them about this dream. Just keep it a secret. Otherwise, they'll become more envious and shaitan is our enemy anyway. You don't want shaitan to take advantage of this. And thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of narratives and complete his favor upon you and upon the family of Yaqub as he completed it upon your father as before, Ibrahim and Ishaq. Indeed, your Lord is knowing and wise. So the story of Yusuf a.s. begins with a dream. The fact is that dreams, they have truth to them. All dreams are not false. They are meaningful. Some dreams are meaningful. From the sunnah we learn that there's three kind of dreams. One type of dream is that which is just hadith nafs Meaning, whatever was going on about in your day, in your life, you dream about that when you sleep. And these kind of dreams, they're pretty obvious. And secondly, there is another type of dream which is from shaitan, which is of sexual nature or it is very disturbing, it is frightening, a nightmare. This is what is from shaitan. Because shaitan does not even leave a person when he is sleeping. This is how much he hates us. Can you imagine? This is how much he hates us, that he frightens us, he bothers us even when we are sleeping. And thirdly, there is another dream which is true which is ru'ya saliha, a good dream, which is meaningful. And remember that a meaningful dream, a believer can have it, a Muslim can have it, and also a non-Muslim can have it. It's a true dream. And what is the purpose of that dream? It's basically to direct us to a better course of action. It's like preparedness for what is to come. So that we think about our situation and we take whatever comes our way consciously, properly, so that we can make the most of the situations that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in. So over here, Yusuf alayhi salam has a dream. And his father tells him that, look, that Allah is going to choose you. If the sun and the moon are prostrating to you, Allah is going to choose you. He's going to give you a special favor. What it is? Allahu a'lam. But we will see what happens. Then what happened? لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ وَإِخْوَتِهِ آيَاتٌ لِلسَّائِلِينَ Certainly were there in Yusuf and his brothers signs for those who ask. Who were asking? The mushrikeen of Makkah. You see, the problem of the brothers of Yusuf ﷺ was that they were jealous of Yusuf. And the mushrikeen of Makkah were also jealous of the Prophet ﷺ. The Yahud were also jealous. What was the jealousy of the Yahud? How could an Arab be a prophet? What was the jealousy of the mushrikeen? How could Muhammad, an orphan, how could he be a prophet? Why not us? And especially the leaders amongst them, they were most jealous. So for example, Abu Jahal, right? He was known as Abu Hakam, the father of judgment, the father of wisdoms. Meaning very, very intelligent man he was, he was known as. But what happens? Jealousy makes the most intelligent people also do foolish things. Foolish things. So just as the mushrikeen of Makkah in their jealousy, they were being so foolish with the Prophet ﷺ in the way they were opposing him, rejecting him, lying about him, spreading rumors about him, and later on they battled with him. They tried to kill him, and instead they ruined themselves. They destroyed themselves. So likewise, the brothers of Yusuf, what did they do? إِذْ قَالُوا When they said, لا يوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا. يوسف and his brother are more beloved to our father than we are, while we are a clan. Indeed, our father is in clear error. They said, "Kill Yusuf or throw him out to another land. The face of your father will then be only for you, and you will be after that a righteous people." What are they discussing over here, the brothers of Yusuf, that they are going to? kill him, throw him away, somehow get rid of Yusuf. Why? Because our father loves him too much. What is this? Pure jealousy. But we see what is interesting here is that they say, let's get rid of him and after that we'll become righteous people. (laughs) Because after all, they were children of a prophet and they knew the difference between wrong and right. They knew what they were going to do was wrong. So they said, we'll repent afterwards. 
Now these were the children of the Prophet of Allah. They were the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam. What do we see? None is safe from the attack of shaitan, even the children of a prophet. Therefore, we need to always seek Allah's protection from our enemy shaitan. It doesn't matter whether we're fasting or we're doing a lot of good deeds. We have studied the Qur'an. We are studying the Qur'an. Even when a person is reading the Qur'an, what are we told? فَاسْتَعِدْ بِاللَّهِ Seek refuge with Allah. Because no one is safe from the attack of shaitan. Then another thing we see is that they say, we will get rid of him and we will become righteous afterwards. Now, a person should not commit a sin with the intention to repent. A person should not commit a sin in the first place. He should not do that. Because what if he is not able to repent? What if? Like for example, saying that, okay, I'll, I'll miss my prayers today. I'll make sure I perform all my prayers tomorrow. No way. Don't ever deliberately sin. Because what if tomorrow never comes? What if we die before that in a state while we are disobedient to Allah? And if we do even repent afterwards, what is that guarantee that that repentance will be accepted? Because Allah says, يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ He forgives whom He wills. It's not up to us that if we submit an application of repentance, it will definitely be accepted. It's up to Allah. He can accept, He can reject. So let's get out of the state of mind that okay, we'll do something wrong right now and I'll repent afterwards. No. This is not the way of the one who fears Allah. And we see over here that this entire discussion, what is the main reason behind that? It's jealousy. They were jealous of him. This is blood relationship. Yusuf a.s. is related to them through blood. He's their brother. But there's no mercy here. And on the other hand, look at the love of self. Why don't we have as much importance? How come our father doesn't give us importance? We are an usbah. We are a group. We are 12 strong men. How come he doesn't like us? How come he doesn't give us so much importance? Now if you think about it, what was the fault of Yusuf a.s.? Why were they so angry with him that they wanted to kill him? What was his fault? He was loved by his father. Now, why was he loved by his father? Obviously, for some good akhlaq, good manners, good behavior that he must have shown to the father because of which the father loved him. And also, remember that love is something that we don't have control over always. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said about Khadija anha that قَدْرُ زِقْتُ حُبَّهَا I was provided with her love. You can't take this love out of my heart. I was provided with that love. Allah gave me that rizq of love. And also that she loved him. Right? That this was rizq. Now, many times it happens that we become jealous of others. Why? Because they are being given more importance by someone. They are more close to someone that we want to be close to. This is challenging what? The division of rizq that Allah has decreed. So we see that jealousy is something that makes a person foolish, that makes a person selfish, that makes a person question Allah's wisdom, His decisions. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that two things will never be gathered in the heart of a servant, iman and hasad. Iman, faith and jealousy, they can never be in one place. What does it mean? That if jealousy takes over, then iman is in danger. It is in danger. And when iman will be strong, then what will happen? Jealousy will go away. It will be reduced. It will become weak. And hasad, remember, it's a disease of the heart. The Prophet ﷺ said, the disease of the nations before you is creeping toward you. Envy and hatred. It is the haliqa. It is the destroyer. Jealousy and hatred. It is the haliqa. He said, I do not speak of what cuts the hair because haliqa is that which shaves the hair. He said, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about jealousy that will sever, that will shave off, it will ruin, it will destroy deen. Deen. Because it happens when a person becomes jealous, then he makes the most foolish decisions. The most foolish decisions. What's the cure? What's the cure if we find ourselves uncomfortable knowing that someone is more beloved to another than us? Or someone has been given an opportunity that we have not been given. Or someone has been given a skill that we have not been given. Someone have been, has been given money, spouse, children, lifestyle, citizenship, whatever it may be, and we don't have it still. These things lead to jealousy. So how to cure this? First of all, remember, nothing happens except by 
Allah's will. He decided, He decreed His decision, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا So the more a person strengthens his faith in Allah, the more jealousy will weaken in his heart. Then also remember to have a greater purpose in life. Our goal in this life is not to be just friends with a particular individual or to just you know, have money or have these worldly things. There's a greater purpose to life than just having these things. And the Prophet ﷺ, remember he warned that كُلُّ ذِي نِعْمَةٍ محسود. Every person who's been given a blessing is envied. He is envied. So first of all, let's not flaunt our blessings so that others become jealous. All right? Let's not give others an opportunity to feel jealous. And secondly, this what teaches us is also that whenever someone is granted a blessing, then he will face jealousy. He will face jealousy from others. Like Yusuf alayhi salam. Allah gave him good akhlaq, good manners. Allah chose him for a specific cause. And he faced the jealousy of those who were so close to him, his own brothers. It hurts. But when people are jealous of you, then realize that you've been given a treasure. So be grateful for that. قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ Said a speaker among them. And who was this? The eldest of those brothers. He said, do not kill Yusuf, but throw him into the bottom of a well. Some travelers will pick him up if you should do something. They said, O oh, our father, why do you not entrust us with Yusuf? While indeed we are to him sincere counselors. You see, someone who's sincere does not need to say that he's sincere. They said, send him with us tomorrow, that he may eat well and play, and indeed we will be his guardians. You're depriving him, let him go with us, let him have fun. Yaqub salam said, Indeed, it saddens me that you should take him. And I fear that a wolf would eat him while you are of him unaware. It's as if he's making an excuse here. Because a wolf cannot eat a boy. Right? It can kill maybe a boy, but cannot eat a boy. So Yaqub salam is as if making an excuse here, and then we'll see what happens. They said, if a wolf should eat him while we are a strong clan, then indeed we would be losers. They're lying to their father. They're deceiving him. You see, lying is something that's very, very dangerous. Because wrong cannot be done except with the help of lying. So we see they're lying here. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever does not give up false statements and evil deeds and speaking bad words to others, then Allah is not in need of his fasting. Allah is not in need of his fasting. So the worship of the liar is not accepted. The person who lies, his ibadah is not accepted. The Prophet ﷺ said, lying and truthfulness cannot be together in one place. In another hadith we learn, there is no sin for which the punishment is hastened for its perpetrator in this world before what is stored for him in the hereafter other than severing relationships, khiyana and lying. So lying is something that brings punishment here in this life. So when they took him out, meaning they insisted and they insisted, and they finally bullied their father into letting Yusuf go with them. When they took him and agreed to put him into the bottom of the well, but we inspired to him, you will surely inform them someday about this affair of theirs while they do not perceive your identity. This is sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired to Yusuf alayhi salam that what your brothers have done is wrong. They are guilty. But Allah won't deprive you. Allah won't make you suffer. In the suffering also, there will be growth. And this is something that we need to remember. That if we have become the target of somebody else's harm, somebody else's enmity, jealousy, and we suffer because of that, remember through that suffering, Allah will bring khair. The Prophet ﷺ was evicted from Makkah. He had to go to Medina to save his life. What happened in Medina? What happened in Medina? He became a leader. Right? The people gathered under him. Islam, you know, prospered. And then they came to their father at night, weeping. They said, O oh, our father, indeed we went racing each other and left Yusuf with our possessions and a wolf ate him. See? The excuse that he made, they used the exact same excuse. But you would not believe us, even if we were truthful. Again, they're lying. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. You see, lie upon lie upon lie. Yaqub said, rather your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting for me. And Allah is the one sought for help against that which you describe. Because the thing is that when somebody is lying to you, and you know they're lying, what can you do? When someone's cheating you, and you know they're cheating, what can you do? You can't do anything. 
So over here, seek Allah's help. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ When you seek help, seek the help of Allah. And Allah will expose the truth. Allah will expose the reality. It's just a matter of time. As we will see over here. He said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ I will observe beautiful, beautiful patience. وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ Notice he doesn't say, I know you're lying. He doesn't confront them. He just deals with them on their apparent. And we did certainly send Musa with our signs and a clear authority, nation after nation. Now the people of Musa, إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِ We sent him to Fir'aun.